So we're doing this study on um, unshakable. We want to we want to give y'all some more context on that, and and in our research, I find this incredible chapter. But um, so I'm looking up verses about when God talks about the the things that are shaken and the things that are remain are the unshakable things. And um, there's a there's a wonderful verse that we have referenced on on the uh, on the Facebook page, um, the Unshakable Love page, that um, is from Hebrews that that really hones in on that that message that um, that we're we're finding elsewhere in the Bible. So anyway, I get, I get to this reference in Haggai chapter three. And I decided to start reading in Haggai chapter 1 because I want to understand the context, right? And so, anyway, um, the uh, I get stuck on Haggai chapter 1 verses 1 through 11 because it's, it's crazy. Um, not crazy, but it's incredible what God's saying here. And so I thought I would, uh, I would uh, give it to you in a little more modern context <clears throat> so again we're talking about Haggai chapter 1 verses 1 through 11 and uh, how Mary sees it <laughs> uh, the Lord of the angel armies said to Haggai the prophet my people are saying they don't have time they don't wish to make time to rebuild my house now let's remember um, God's house. That's that's God's holy temple, the place where God dwells, where He lives, where He resides, where He where He abides. And as Christians, we we understand that we are now God's holy temple. And so, let's listen to the message from Haggai to his to the people of God. So the God of, God of the universe sent Haggai to give this message to his people. You've built yourself up quite nicely. A good job, the Beamer, nice house, upper middle class neighborhood, good social circles. Yep, you've got it all. But what's up with that building down at the end of the road? It's dilapidated. Windows are broke out, curtains are torn. Shoot, half that wall over there is gone. Oh, that's my house. Please, tell me. How is it that you're sitting in the lap of luxury, yet my house looks like, well, like it should be condemned? Can't you see what's going on? You're planting 40 acres of whatever, but only harvesting what would normally come from 10 acres. You eat, but never feel content. You drink, yet remain dehydrated. You, you have all the clothes that you could ever want, yet you remain cold. You keep earning and getting raises, yet you have less in savings and at the end of the pay period than ever before. Don't you understand why? It is time to rebuild my house. It's going to take some time, effort, some finances, and actual physically hard work. But my dear, you're not going to be okay and better until you acknowledge me. Make my dwelling place a beautiful place of honor. And when you've rebuilt my house, I will get excited about it. I will take joy in it and be honored before you rebuild my house. You hoped for bountiful returns on your investments, but the margins were slim at best. And that little profit you brought home, well, I caused the AC to go out in your beautiful desert home during the heat of summer. 
Now your profit will go to the cold wind blowing through your central air system, which your premenopausal wife cannot live without, like, literally, one of you will die if it doesn't get fixed. Why? Why? Because while you are prospering at my hand and building your own luxurious home, you have neglected my dwelling place, says the Lord of the Angel Armies. It's because you have neglected our relationship that you can't get a better return on your investments. I caused the drought in Africa that affected the price of tea to go up in China and as such your stock in Lipton that yesterday was up and the dividend checks were healthy. Today they are telling you the last three checks are null and void because they tanked overnight. Furthermore, I use that same drought to do the same to your Starbucks stock as well as your Hershey's stock. Now your 401k looks more like a 100.25k. Happy retirement. Oh, that weird bug no one could figure out how to get rid of in your house? That, that infested everything in the, in the, every package and every container in your pantry? Yeah, that was me. When your fridge broke while you're on vacation and everything in your fridge went bad? Me. When your car broke down in the middle of nowhere and you had to walk 10 miles to get a cell signal and finally, to finally get a $250 Uber order on this incredibly slow 2G network you're grumbling about instead of being grateful for? And you call for a tow from the nearest tow and auto repair shop and they charge you a 100% markup for convenience tax because you don't want to leave your new Beamer on the side of the road on the weekend. And when you finally get to your car three days later, it's been stripped and the gas has been siphoned out. And they say they found it like that. Yep, me, me, me. Me. Also me. I'm getting the impression God's trying to get our attention. I'm excited to see what the next, the rest of the chapter has. So, we'll find out next.